Welcome to Understanding Human Anatomy. This is the third video on the upper extremity. This one will be dealing with the humerus, the bone of the arm. We're going to start by sketching a humerus. And I'm going to start with the nice ball-like head of the humerus and that comes down to a shaft and then down on the shaft we widen out and there is an epicondyle on each side and we come back up on the shaft and then there's an expanded elevated area the greater tubercle so let's put in some labels let's start with the head the head of the humerus and the head of the humerus is the articular surface of the humerus that articulates with the glenoid of the scapula so here's the label going to the head it's a very smooth structure because it's an articular surface in life it's covered with hyaline cartilage. Now there's a slight indentation between the head and the rest of the um, humerus and this is the neck and we call this the anatomical neck. and it's the neck that you would see on most bones immediately adjacent to the head of the bone just a slight narrowing so that's the anatomical neck uh, in anatomy we never like to use extra terms when we don't need to so the fact that we have a modifier anatomical neck means that we must have another neck as well and I'm going to draw a line through an area that's called the surgical neck and it is named surgical neck because this is the most common area for the bone to fracture and need to be put back together via surgery something that would be called an open reduction where a surgeon goes in and literally uses screws um, and, and pieces of metal to put the bone back together and to hold it in place while it heals. So that's the surgical neck. This other elevation is the greater tubercle. and the greater tubercle is an area of muscle attachment and 
since it's called greater, it's the larger of two tubercles. And we'll sketch in the lesser tubercle right here. lesser tubercle and we'll put a line in to identify where it is right here and if we look at the two tubercles between them I'm going to try and show this by just drawing some very thin lines here to indicate some shading a depression there is a groove and that groove is called the intertubercular groove And the intertubercular groove is a groove between the two tubercles. That's what the name literally means. And through that groove runs a tendon. And it's a tendon of the muscle biceps brachii. And in particular, it's the tendon of the long head of biceps brachii. Now down around mid middle of the shaft, mid shaft of the humerus, we see an area that's slightly elevated and kind of rough. And I'm trying to draw that with just a bunch of fine lines in here to indicate it. And this is called the deltoid tuberosity. And again, it's a tuberosity, and as I said, most tuberosities are for muscle attachment, and this is for the attachment of the deltoid muscle. And in fact, it's slight it's area that's slightly raised and roughened, it's pulled up by the muscle pulling on the bone. As we go down to the distal end of the humerus, we find that there are two articular surfaces. one that's more lateral looks like a small head and is called the capitulum And the capitulum is there to articulate 
width the head of the radius. So capitulum is lateral and this bump just next to the capitulum is called the lateral epicondyle And the lateral epicondyle, put the line in, the lateral epicondyle is again for attachment of muscle. And we see that there is an area above it that is actually quite sharp um, in, in nature. Uh, this is the lateral supracondylar ridge. And this ridge is an expansion of surface area for the attachment of muscle. Now where I, I drew an indentation here, this is a structure known as the trochlea and I'm going to draw in some lines here to help distinguish it. And the trochlea is an articular surface, so one of the characteristics is when you look at this, it'll be quite smooth looking. And it's a groove that wraps around from the anterior surface, from the front of the bone, all the way around to the posterior surface of the bone. And the trochlea Trochlea is the articular surface for the proximal end of the ulna. And the name trochlea is actually a Latin word for pulley. And if you've ever seen a pulley like on your automobile, if you look under the hood, you see the pulleys that the belts run through. You'll see that it, it looks like this grooved surface um, that we have as the trochlea. And the ulna will have a corresponding area um, that will articulate with the trochlea um, very nicely. Then we have a medial epicondyle and the medial epicondyle 
similar to the lateral epicondyle, it's just a, a bulge on the medial side, is there for muscle attachment. And as we had on the lateral side, we have a medial supracondylar ridge. And like the lateral supracondylar ridge, the medial supracondylar ridge is also an expanded area for muscle attachment. Now, on the posterior side of the bone, there is one more prominent structure we can't see in this view, and that would be the olecranon fossa. The olecranon fossa, again, is on the posterior side. And it's at the superior edge of the trochlea on the posterior side. There is a process on the ulna called the olecranon process that when the elbow is fully extended, the olecranon process fits into the olecranon fossa. So these are the major structures of the humerus. And again, the important ones the greater and lesser tubercles because they're going to be muscle attachment, deltoid tuberosity, lateral and medial epicondyles with their supracondylar ridges, and then the articular surfaces, the head of the humerus for articulation with the scapula at the glenoid, the trochlea for articulation with the ulna, and the capitulum for articulation with the radius. The next video will talk about the radius and ulna and how they articulate with each other. Thank you for your attention.